I'm Catherine Reed Day, host of the St. Paul Forum, and coming up next, we'll be talking about Bedlam's big lowdown and with Lucas Koski and Arna Landrum. That's next on the St. Paul Forum. Hi, I'm Catherine Reed Day, and joining me today on the St. Paul Forum are Lucas Koski and Arna Landrum, and they're here about Bedlam Theater and the Big Lowdown. So we're going to find out a little bit more about what that's all about. So Lucas, uh, tell us first about Bedlam Theater. We've we've known about the theater for what ten years. The theater was actually founded in 1993. I have to count then. Yep. So it's 20 <laughs> actually in August. Okay. Um, so it's our 20. 20th birthday. My gosh. Kind of crazy. A lot of different iterations. Mm -hmm. um, we've mostly existed on the Minneapolis side of the river, but it was actually founded by McAllister students. So right. So it started in St. Paul, kind of. Um, and uh, we are continuing to have a presence in Minneapolis, and we're expanding and opening up a venue that'll be a bar restaurant performance venue in Lower Town, which will be entitled Bedlam Lower Town. Bedlam Lower Town. So there are going to be two locations. Yes. And the history of the organization has really had to do with activism and engagement. That's going to be one of the things that we're going to have Arna talk to us about. But um, tell us a little bit about the mission. What what was the germ of the idea that it started? Where then? Yeah. Where has it, it gone? The mission really kind of started with the idea of radical theater. And that understanding of the word radical has grown and changed a lot. Um, we now talk about radical as um, examining the root and changing the routine. So actually going back to the way that things like were and understanding how they can fit in today's world. So if you think about Shakespeare back in the day, we now think about Shakespeare as like this high art theater, but really it was for the masses. Mm -hmm. It was a big, big, uh, Brawly crowd of people with turkey legs and drinking beer, and then there happened to be a play going on. So that's actually our type of theater, where um, it's about people gathering and witnessing something together. You know, it's no different than a baseball game. Mm -hmm. um, but the second half of our mission is really about the blend of professional and community. So sometimes people call us a community theater, and sometimes people call us a presenting theater, or some maybe sometimes people call us professional theater. Um, but really, it's about understanding that the collaboration between different types of skill sets and different types of ideas and thoughts can produce new work as opposed to just doing the same thing again. Mm -hmm. So going back to the root of theater, which is about people getting together and then changing the way that we make theater is really how we want to see the world. Yeah. And so um, this, uh, I, so the relocation to the lower town, this has been <coughs> a really big move for, for the theater. Yes. It's also been a big move for the city because there's this, um, Increasing emphasis on the lower town area and the mm -hmm. um, the public square, if you will, down yeah. here with the, the depot and so forth. What? How do you see yourselves fitting into that? Yeah, uh, we looked for a long time of where we wanted our next venue to be, and uh, I actually lived in Lower Town in, back in 2010 and knew the neighborhood pretty well, but was you know it was a different place three years ago, and uh, what. We discovered when uh, Joe Spencer from the mayor's office showed us this space was that it was the perfect connective tissue for the Lower Town Master Plan, which the three major assets were the Union Depot, which at that time had not been re revamped, Mears Park, which is beautiful and great, and uh, the Farmer's Market. So if you walk through our space, you can come from the depot through our space into a, an alleyway, and then Mears Park is straight ahead, and the Farmer's Market is on your right. So we actually see our venue as being almost like an alley that connects these three major key assets. Mm -hmm. So it's almost as much about our place in the neighborhood as it is about the building itself. And did you actually say where that place is? Because I think I, I missed not, that. No. <laughs> uh, it is 213 East 4th Street. East and it's 4th. Just across from the depot, the, the, the terminal light rail stop, we like to think of as the first stop on the Green Line, mm -hmm. is right out the front door. Okay, so you're part of the essential connective tissue. Arna, maybe you can tell us a little bit. We haven't talked about the event that you're connected to. We're going to come up with that. But maybe you could talk a little bit about why the engagement strategy is important. That's really your specialty. Yes. How do you see that? Um, what have you seen about their engagement strategy that's intrigued you? Well, um, what first excited me about Bedlam Theater was how much work they did with the community that they were situated in. Um, 
in Cedar Riverside. Um, I got to participate in my very first Tin Fest, uh, 10 Minute Play Festival a couple years ago. And it just seemed like a space that was really open and friendly to everyone um, finding their creative voice, no matter how much experience they had previously had in theater. Um, and that also that it was really, really interested. Bedlam seemed very interested in the health of the community around it. So it wasn't just, you know, our friends who do theater. It was our friends who do theater and these people who live nearby and being very concerned about the issues that were, um, that they were addressing in, inside of community and making theater ab about that. So that was um, what drew me to Bedlam in the first place. And so in terms of that, I just like the idea of even broadening and expanding that community even more and uh, Bedlam continuing to get to know the neighborhoods that it's a part of and being welcoming in that way. Now those two neighborhoods the, uh, are pretty distinctly different. You know, the Cedar Riverside has um, a, a huge uh, change in its demographics of influx of a deep Somali community, a, mm -hmm. a real hometown now for the Somali mm -hmm. community. It's got uh, the universities, uh, both Augsburg and the University of Minnesota, you know, campuses. Um, how would you describe the differences between that neighborhood and its particular questions and issues and this new one as you see it? Well, as I see it, so I'm a St. Paul community organizer and um, St. Paul community organizers I found uh, tend to be pretty uh, about our neighborhood and only our neighborhood. And so I think my particular lens toward Lower Town had been as a business district. That's kind of all, I, like people work down there and they play down there and they go to theater and eat down there. And more and more I'm starting to understand, and I mean it has to do with how St. Paul is shifting, but more and more I'm seeing it as a neighborhood with residents where people live and make their life. Um, and so for me, being able to be connected more to the people who make their home in Lower Town and realize that it's not just about a destination to do fun things, um, but that people are actually making it their home is, is really interesting. Mm -hmm. And so that, and would you add anything from your perspective at Bedlam, how these different locations are, because you had to leave the uh, Cedar Riverside entirely, correct? Uh, well, or, we shifted over to the sewer neighborhood, which is kind yeah. of around Cedar Riverside. Um, so we have a warehouse and office space on 27th and 27th, just off the Greenway. Um, uh, which is a wonderful, amazing neighborhood. It's very familiar with us, South Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. That's kind of been Bedlam's identity. Uh, Lower Town is really interesting. I think there is a, a quiet density of people mm -hmm. um, that is often hidden just because it's a place that has so many like live work studios and studios. And the way I always tell people about Lower Town is that if all the walls were glass, you would be amazed at how much things, how many things are happening. Mm -hmm. But you know, a lot of things are happening in small pockets. And so one of the things that we want to do is we want to try to figure out how we can tease out some of, some of that activity and show people that it's a bustling, creative, energetic, inspiring place. And so the Big Lowdown, which is our event that's happening in uh, the 23rd through 25th, the, of it, of August, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> um, that's all about trying to put activity into the street. And so if you were here for Northern Spark that happened in uh, June, June um, or during art crawls, like you see all this great activity. And in my opinion, Lower Town is the most walkable neighborhood in the Twin Cities. And it's made for these great, wonderful events. But there's just not, the tipping point hasn't happened where that's expected. It's kind of like, oh, this is unique. And so if we can kind of make that activity more regular and people come to expect it, I think others will follow and it'll be an exciting, bustling neighborhood. So let's talk about what this big event is, the Big Lowdown, a great adventure. A what roving it? adventure Roving in adventure, yes. okay. In a Lower Town roving adventure. Lower, lower Town roving. Lower Town adventure. Oh, okay, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the postcard. All right. So uh, it's, uh, tell us about the Big Lowdown. So the, the Big Lowdown is happening August 23rd through 25th. And um, it was, it, I think it's just a take off of Bedlam commun uh, Community's 10 Minute Play Festival. And you said earlier that you were actually in a 10 Minute Play Festival. Yeah. Did, did, were you an author of one of the fest, uh, plays or you were participating in some way? Oh no, I got to be an actor. You were an actor, okay. Yeah. So you've actually been on the stage. I have. So tell us about the, the content of the, the Big Lowdown. Right, so the Big Lowdown is designed to bring in a bunch of different neighborhoods and create pieces that we've never thought of before that aren't written. Um, we don't take scripts and then turn them into plays. It's literally just creating 
ensemble-based work. Um, and what it is is there's 10 different groups that are stationed kind of throughout Lower Sound, some of the Union Depot and whatever, some in Mears Park and different alleyways and crazy places that we want to people to explore. And what happens is people come to the Union Depot, to the box office in the, the new beautiful waiting room, and then they're going to be given a map and they have to go find their tour guide. And so they go out to a location in, in the neighborhood and find their, their tour guide, and the guide will then take them around to these different performances that are scattered throughout the neighborhood. So the connective tissue is actually the neighborhood. It's not really about a narrative structure or an arc. There are some semblances of um, connectivity just because we've all been working and playing and trying to figure things out together, so people are riffing off each other's ideas. And our director, um, who is the artistic director of live action set, Noah Bremer, has worked really hard trying to sit in on rehearsals and try to give feedback so that there is some reflective and responsive like iterations amongst these different performances. Okay, There's a concept. That relates to that location or a neighborhood or a set of people, and then there's an idea and then they're going to understand it but there's some, so there's a little bit of improv <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's some unexpected the words might change because it'd be less rehearsed mm -hmm. and more alive mm -hmm. i don't know how am i doing i <laughs> make sure well. somebody so doing well. I, think, I think what we can say is that each little section of, it's actually seven and a half minutes not ten but that's because of travel time um each section we have what we've been calling creative leads, who have brought in actors and brought in other people to help them build what they're creating. But they are solely responsible for the content of the work. And then our festival director, Noah, is trying to help them f shape it and make it beautiful and make it work and make it lovely and fit the space. But uh, like New Age Salon is a group that is doing a piece. And they, it's you know, musical, they're telling fairy tales, it's very much a script and they're telling a story. Um, another group is playing in a train station um, and they're exploring with their voices with the audience and mm -hmm. they're talking about uh, how it feels to think about memories just vocally. And there's, you know, there's not really words per se, mm. it's mostly just like sound so, and action. Sound. Mm -hmm. um, so I wouldn't want to pigeonhole the whole yeah. event by saying like, That's great. there's a script, there's this, there's that. Okay. It's really, so, you're it's, an it's, an it's an experience. It's an experience and an adventure. If you're just joining us, I'm speaking with Arna Landstrom and Lucas Koski about Bedlam Theater and the big lowdown that's coming up. Now, we're having, you know, you're helping me understand, but I think one of the messages that people, you know, part of what I think Northern Spark did for people, what I kind of get the sense you're saying to people is, first of all, is the key word is the adventure. You want people who are really interested in some discovery, want to mm -hmm. find something new, aren't uh, here because they can expect to have it start at this and end at that time. Um, so you're really asking people who have that spontaneity, have that curiosity, and are really open to a new experience. So maybe you could talk a little bit about that from an engagement strategy and maybe about some of the people they're gonna see and experience in each of these stations. Sure, well in addition to seeing different types of performances, I know one of the performance um, is dance and b-boying and another is a drum line. And in addition to the types of performances, um, we've really, really focused on an outreach strategy um, about exploring Lower Town and St. Paul. So a lot of our art artists are from the west side of St. Paul, from Frogtown, and some folks who do have home base in Lower Town. Um, and all of us together are sort of getting to know the Lower Town community um, as we as have visitors. this as visitors, mm -hmm. as we have this roving adventure where we get to see this sort of circusy act in Mears Park, um, this really quiet, subtle act in an alleyway. So it's just very much about I don't know what I'm going to see or even mm -hmm. where I'm going to see it. But um, I'm going to come with my friends and we'll figure it all out. You know, um, as someone who's been involved in art crawls within a building and watch, watching people have trouble going around a slightly dark corner, <laughs> uh, I'm really kind of interested in the, is that the strategy behind the tour guides? Because uh, not all of us are always adventurous. And mm -hmm. as you describe it, I think it sounds really <coughs> cool. And I'm kind of up for that. But, but there are a lot of people who really get, even if they thought they were coming out with the willingness to do that, Tell us about these tour guides. So Barry Medor, who has been a Lower Town, uh, has worked in Lower Town for over a decade, I believe. 
he is heading up what we've been calling um, uh, uh, rovers, roaming, roaming rovers. The rag, ragtag, the ragtag roamers. Ragtag roamers. And what it initially was, was it going to be people who could um, connect different acts together. And we realized that there might be an issue with getting people feeling comfortable walking mm -hmm. down an alley. We decided that we were going to shift that focus and have a tour guide that basically cares for and leads a group of people mm. throughout the whole night. And so the idea is that these individuals, some of them you know, professional actors, some of them first time people who love the neighborhood, some of them um, uh, uh, people who care about Lower Town and, and just have a connection to Bedlam, that their idea is that they have a personality that accepts their group and leads them and explains what's going on and, and says, come with me, I want to show you something cool that you've never seen before. And so it's, it's, a, it's a strategy of having knowledge and excitement about a space and then usually if you're giving a tour in the neighborhood and you're really excited about this building was built in mm -hmm. 1898 and oh my god there's molasses that stripped through all the floor so that's why that stains there. People get that sense and they get wrapped up with you and then they feel comfortable and they want to see what else you have to show. So it's really about explaining the event, explaining where you are, putting it in context, and then through that excitement, that enthusiasm, making people feel comfortable and want to follow. Fabulous. And it, how did you recruit those people? What, and are they, what's their background? Uh, and how many of them do you need? I can't even picture it. Like, do you, how do you know how many you need? We've done a lot of math. No <laughs> okay. amazing charts or spreadsheets. And matrices. Yes. And, okay. yeah. yes. Um, so a part of how we got uh, the creative leads, leads that uh, Lucas talked about before was um, we just talked to some people who had already had some relationship to Bedlam and said, this is what we're trying to do. Um, who do you think should be involved? And so our outreach strategy was, you tell us who do you think should be involved? And one of the people um, who was reached out to was Barry Medor, and so he in turn has been like reaching out to his network and saying, this is happening, you should be a part of it. Um, and all of us have taken that on, uh, especially me, to some extent, um, meeting people and saying, you know what, you seem like you would be a great roamer. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think we worked out the math that we need 12 of them. Yep, every night. Every night. Every every night, and it's how many, five nights? Does three nights. It's actually just three. Just we three also nights. have a, a, a public showing that's kind of a dress rehearsal um, because it's this crazy logistical nightmare of an event. Yeah, so, a lot. Uh, and there's music in the mirrors on Thursdays. So we decided we're going to do the public, public showing on Wednesday night, which is, I believe, the 21st, and then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday are the actual performances. Um, so it's... Groups of up to 40 people going with a roamer and seeing 10 different shows and then sh bending up back at the Union Depot for the kind of finale. And the whole thing, uh, any night, it's going to take about how long? About two hours and 15 minutes. Yep. Okay. So it's pretty reasonable. Fair commitment. Not a big yeah, commitment, Not though. a huge commitment. <laughs> mm -hmm. We've had to try to keep pulling back our expansion and making sure that we can do it all in less than four hours. <laughs> <laughs> we got excited. Yeah. <laughs> got a little excited. Got a little Had to rein ambitious. ourselves in yep. a little. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are those uh, uh, people going to be in costume, the, the, the guides, or are they, are they putting on a persona, or are they there as themselves? I think um, we're expecting all of the roamers to have a persona. Um, and some of those persona, per, ugh, excuse me, some of those personas will be themselves. Like, okay. I, I'm, if I were a roamer, I might be there as myself, you know, just sort of with... Amplified. Yeah, amplified. Um, some actually are planning on having full-on characters with backstories that will be revealed to their group throughout the night. Wow, that sounds fun. So there's lots to look. So, so as people uh, start talking about it and tweeting it, they might be saying, you really should try to get back with XYZ right. guide, although will they get to choose their guide? So the way that we've constructed the night, there, I believe, is one experience, I mean, every experience is unique, but there is one like actual little vignette or a little seven or 10 minute play that each group will not be able to see. So we've set up a system that if you really are coming to see Katya or you know a different Billy or Chu, that you're able to say, hey, I really wanna make sure I see this one and you can choose. Mm -hmm. So I imagine if you wanna make sure that you're involved with one of the roamers, we could figure that out okay. too. Okay, maybe not the most important detail. <laughs> well, well, and, but, I did want to say that there will be a choice to go through kind of a slower track um, because it is kind of a manic night and we'll be like, performance, let's go, performance, let's go. Um, and a part of the community engagement that we've thought about is like people whose bodies may not be able to withstand that kind of movement. So we're taking people on the slower track and making sure that um, 
that we're taking care of folks with different abilities as well. Yeah, fun. And how many, so you can accommodate, it sounds like, how many people per night? 480. Oh, wow. That's, that's yes. going to be great. That's so right. you're going yes. to get a pretty pretty good divot for a, a short run. Huh? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And so uh, anything else that you want them to know, I wanted to uh, shift to one other topic before we close. What, um, any other really important details you want to make sure they hear about? We're going to put up the website. We're going to help them get tickets. Are there advanced tickets or are they there buy are them? There are advanced tickets. Our website, you can find a link. Um, we're using tempo tickets for the sales. I just wanted to say again that this is a collaboration with Live Action Set, um, who is, they're an amazing ensemble-based theater company that do a lot of movement work and have done things like this both with Bedlam and, and other spaces. Uh, and so it's been really fun to actually finally collaborate on an official level. Um, and mm -hmm. it's really informed not only the spirit of the event, but like the logistics and the planning and the, the feel. So we'll put up a live action set website action and we'll also one. make sure that they have the Bedlam one. They're, they're going to be able to find ticket information, parking, and where to begin. It sounds like it's All just come in the front door of the Union Depot is the... No. The Kellogg entrance, the Kellogg actually, because <laughs> there's going to be a wedding one of those nights. So okay, we'll so, have all uh, the so there's a different, the parking will be all involved. So one more thing I want to make sure we talk about is uh, Bedlam has been around now 20 years, uh, mm -hmm. and just recently you received some national recognition with a major grant from, uh, from whom? Art Place America. And what is that all about? Art Place America actually is what helped inform how we do the big lowdown. So when I talked earlier about why we chose the space, the connective tissue, all this stuff, the lofts, if they were, you know, is that Bedlam really felt that if we could expand the activity in the neighborhood, it would help us at our venue. So um, if you think of uh, Paul Wellstone, we all do better and we all do better, we want people to think of Lower Town as an exciting place so that they're there, and then when they're there, they come to us. Um, and so Art Place America, uh, it helps us do programming both in our space, but also around the entire neighborhood. The, we've been doing a series of shows over at the Union Depot on the East Plaza. It's three college interns who have just been booking shows and, and making music happen in the plaza. That's part of what we've been doing, just like having activity where both Lower Town residents can come and experience it, but also people from other neighborhoods. Uh, so the Art Place grant has allowed us to think about how we make theater and performance everywhere as opposed to just mm -hmm. like in our space. Mm -hmm. And why do you both think that it's important to our community to have the Bedlams of the world in this kind of an event? I think a lot of us as we grow and become adults, we forget how to respond to joy and we forget how to engage, and we forget how to experience things. And sometimes when you have a camera in front of you, or you have somebody on a platform, or you have somebody with an amplifier, it kind of shouts to attention, like, oh, something's happening, and I can experience it. And when you have that experience, you can be connected. And the connection, whether it's at a baseball game, or if it's a concert, or if it's a play, allows us to be humans and allows us to connect with people. And that's really important because if we don't connect with humans, we don't, we don't live in a society. And the engagement through an act of art or sport or whatever um, can foster that connection. Great. Some of the ways that we create art in the world um, creates this giant, like, schism between audience and artist and people look at artists as like they're people with this giant genius somewhere in their brains that I don't have access to and that's not something that I could do <clears throat> and what I really enjoy about Bedlam and live action set is that it just like continues to narrow that gap and lets people just lets people see the creativity that they have and let them play with it and lets people um, ex make, have the experience of making art and getting to share it with as many people because I do think that artfulness is one of the great joys of the world, but so often people think that it's outside of them, that I'm not a creative person, I can't do that. And so I think it's important to have reminders that, yeah, you sure can. Mm, that's really nice, yeah. The, uh, so the, the phrases I'm hearing are create, uh, connect, uh, play, play, and uh, show up. Mm -hmm. um, 
So, um, so just to remind everyone, they want you want them to show up really soon. You want them to show up on August twenty third. Uh, the opening night or uh, the 22nd? 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Okay. Uh, the 21st is a preview, so if you like things really messy, which Bella excels at, come <laughs> on the 21st. If you like things a little bit more polished, which live action set excels at, then come on one of the, the, <laughs> one of the 23rd, the 24th, and 25th. Mm -hmm. Great. And it's for the big, lowdown, the big lowdown, the roving lower, lower town, town adventure. adventure. Okay. Well, if uh, thank you so much. We appreciate your joining us. That's all we have time for on this week's forum. Come join us again next time.